good day everyone and welcome to another episode of BlankCanvasTV.com. We're changing the way you see and experience art. My name's Andre Knott, I'm your host for this episode and all episodes. Hmm. Monet, unfinished. Cezanne, messy. Picasso, a bunch of cubes. Why is breakthrough art, the biggest names in art history and the biggest, fantastic, most breakthrough art in history always derided in its day? Why is the genius only dis discovered and actually delivered later on? Why are people only asking themselves this is genius or telling themselves this is genius 10 years down the road? Well, these are questions that get asked all the time. And in fact, it's one of the biggest questions I've had in the whole time I've been doing this art business. And I've always asked that question myself. Why is art always cutting edge? Why is it always derided or seen as kooky in its time? Goodness me, Warhol. <laughs> Campbell's soup cans, are you kidding me? How can that be art? That's what people were asking back in the 60s. But today it's seen as a, one of the pieces of art history. And in fact, Warhol originals are going for sometimes over $50 million. Goodness. Well, I think this is interesting. Why landmark art is always, has always been seen as ugly at first, no matter where it's been throughout all the centuries. You could look at the perspective of Giotto back in the, night, in the 14th century. You could look at the passionate realism of Caravaggio and those incredible colors and light that he used in his works throughout the Baroque in the 17th century. You could look at the severity of the paintings of Jacques-Louis David uh, in the 18th century, but throughout history, the master works or the master artists have always been derided in their time. Why? We're going to answer that question right now. You could actually go and ask, answer it by saying something simple like, well, that's the way people are. That's just the way people are. You know, they're going to see something as difficult at first. But I think there's more to it than that. We've got to look at it a bit more in depth. And there's a few reasons why. I've, th I've found three reasons that I understand as to why uh, art is derided in his time. First of all, is a very common sense type answer. We're all social animals. We're all social animals and we all want to uh, have the comfort of going with the pack and uh, seeing what is, you know, we don't, we, we're kind of resistant to change. We, we don't want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. We want to keep up with the Joneses and whatever the Joneses are doing. But that means that something that's a bit different out there can be seen as a little shocking, a little bit out there. So we are afraid by very definition. The other situation, the second reason I'd say, is because we are all jealous beings. All of us, no matter who we are, we're, if we're not afraid, we're envious. Okay, so we're envious of whatever is new and maybe cutting edge and heaven forbid that someone else might have a better idea or understanding of what's around than we do and there might be change out there. Art is also a business. So think about it in these terms, in any business, no matter where you are, if you're at the top of that business, you want to stay at the top of that business. If you've got a niche at the top of that business, you don't want things to change. My goodness, you're riding a wonderful wave all the way into the shore. Let's put it in surfing terms. So if it, art is a business, there's disruption to that business by new things coming in. No, no way will you want to, uh, to embrace that. So there's, there's that. But uh, the third reason is that um, I call this the psycho, psych, psychophysiological, psychophysiological, I'll get this right in a minute, psychophysiological effect. And that is that the brain actually takes, it takes a lot of information or a lot of processing for the brain to actually understand the difference, say, between a, a telephone, a telephone and a pillow or a stapler and a book. I mean, these are the things that are uh, interesting to me that, you know, the brain actually takes quite a bit of detail and processing to actually see that. So if we're asking the brain to do all, all of that, and that might seem a little silly to us right now, but in physiological terms, that's a great amount of processing effort, right? So it's, we're asking it to deal with Picasso, to deal with Warhol, to deal with Jackson Pollock. I mean, these are very, very difficult concepts. So uh, the minute you see something new, in the art world or new in any world, it's a little bit difficult to understand. But the question remains, and it's a grueling kind of a concept for the brain to keep, keep analyzing and keep analyzing, keep analyzing things throughout life, no matter what it is. But if you look at it in these terms, it's interesting to me that art is probably the only concept in life where we don't actually 
embrace it straight away. It takes some time. Think about this. We love the new and improved concept. It doesn't matter where we are. I mean, on, you know, Fifth Avenue in New York City, or Madison Avenue, all of the brand new fashions are coming out all the time. People go to New York City all the time for Fashion Week, and they embrace the new concepts. They want to see the new concepts. They, we all want the new refrigerator. We all want the new microwave. We all want the new iPod, the new TV, the new whatever it is, the new car. We're all very, very quick to uh, to get on top of all that. Uh, we go to the new travel destinations. We want to go to all these places we've never been before uh, in travel. So we do embrace that. But why does art get, with all of those things said, why does art get kind of pushed to the back burner and it's a little bit uh, slow to move? Well, I think uh, it's a combination, like I said, of all those three things. You know, first of all, that we are common sense beings and that we're social animals and our comfort levels are there and we don't want to, we want to resist change in that, in that being. Because art is something that goes throughout the ages. It's not something that's seen to change overnight like that, like other commodities in life. Um, also that we're jealous beings and that we're, you know, we're not, if we're not afraid, we're envious. So that there's that concept as well and that we don't like that disruption. The other thing is the psychophysiological effect, as we said, and, and how the brain kind of takes quite a while to kind of process these new ideas and new developments. So there's those three. But here's a concept for you. Get used to hunting for new art. Get used to the en enjoyment and idea of doing that and perhaps the art world will change and embrace things a little more quickly into the future. Enjoy it. Art's fun. I'm Andre Knott. I'm your host at BlankCanvasTV.com. We'll see you on another episode. Come say good day here at the website.